My name is Richard Shear, and this is the Montpelier City Forum, where we're going to be discussing issues and candidates for the upcoming town hall meeting. And this is an important show because you're going to have important decisions. And at the end, I'll say, please vote. And at the beginning, I'll say, please vote. We need more civic engagement. To my immediate left is Ben Eastwood, who is running in District 2. Correct. Yeah. Uh, ben, what part of District 2 are you in? Um, I live up on, uh, on Main Street, where uh, Emmons and Main, 241 Main Street. So, you know, I'm up the hill, um, which is kind of kind of an interesting perspective of the city. I, I overlook City Hall, or I mean, uh, the State House from my bedroom, which is kind of a neat, neat view. So, um, yeah. <laughs> and you're halfway between, in a sense, that part of District 2 and the part that's the outers on Town Hill Road. Right, yeah. You know, it's, it is sort of the end of the the sort of uh, uh, suburban area within town here, the, the, the more heavy, heav heavily developed area. So yeah, up, up the hill from me, we get into Town Hill and um, Murray Hill, Murray Hill and in those areas. Um, so, you know, I have deer run through my backyard every day. <laughs> but you've also got, I believe you've got part of Berry Street on, on District 2. Yeah, District 2 goes over to Berry Street. Um, and, and you know it's an interesting walk if you walk along College Street from from my you know from my house and jag over to College Street and then you know there's all these beautiful old painted ladies and and some really nice old houses and some some wealth and you get down the hill into Berry Street and you know you get into this very working class neighborhood that that um, is uh, a lot more closely um, built uh, um, smaller apartments in these buildings and and just a you know it's a uh, a feeling of walking into a whole different town almost. So. What's the commonality in District 2? I, uh, I'm sure you've done doors in, in all parts of, or starting to do doors in all parts of District 2. Well, you know, I, I, I think, you know, I think everybody in District, I think everybody in Montpelier, there's a commonality w within our city is that, that people like, like living here and, and, and really want to live here and really want to make Montpelier a good place for themselves and for their kids to live. Um, and I, you know, I think whether you know people are of a more professional working class or, or working class level, I think that's the you know, real com commonality. We, we like our schools, we like our kids. Um, we want we want to we want to take care of our seniors and take care of each other. And um, you know, I, I, I think that's been really a refreshing thing to, to, to talk to people and, 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 and get that pretty 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 much from door to door. Now, you know enough about council to know that this is not just a Wednesday night gig. Right. And that it doesn't pay much at all. Right. Uh, it's, you're, you're in committee meetings. You're on organizations, boards. Why, why the time commitment? What, what caused you to want to run for city council? Well, you know, I, uh, part of it is public service, you know, being a, being a service to the, to, to the community. I've served on the Conservation Commission for the last several years. And it's, that, that's been really interesting, kind of, you know, my, my personal interest with that is, was much more on a hands-on um, rivers and water quality and, and hands-on conservation. But we've really had an opportunity to develop, delve into zoning, into some of these other areas that has opened my eyes a lot more to the inner works of the city. So I really want to expand what I've been doing in the Conservation Commission and take on some of the other issues in the city. Were you following the master plan discussion that's been going on for years and finally seemed to have come to a conclusion? Well, you know, it, it's interesting. I, I, I think I have, I have been, you know, following it on the, uh, on the back burner. Um, you know, I, I feel like we, we, we had a really a robust public discussion about the master plan and really drew people in to um, really uh, give city council an idea of the direction people wanted to see the city. And, um, you know, it seems like th there's been some disconnect between how the city has worked and, and, and actually how the master plan has wanted. Um, you know, Can you elaborate on that? What's the disconnect in your mind? Well, you know, I, I, I think there's been a lot more focus on development and on developers than on, and then on some of the community issues. Uh, you, you know, um, uh, and, 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 and to expand beyond the, the master plan a little bit, I, just, I think this is a, a general thing. I think that we have this, this, this on, the, on our face, we really want to get people engaged. Uh, one Taylor Street is a good example. I mean, this is another sort of ongoing <laughs> process, <Decade long>. <laughs> right? <laughs> I, 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 Mary Hooper the other day said she, you know, she, she you know, when she heard there's going to be actual groundbreaking on it, she's like, I, I, I could use that when I was mayor, you know. Um, but the, you know, it, it's a process where I feel that there was a lot of public engagement, and then 
sort of what was going to happen happened anyways, and and I don't know that necessarily the plan that's been was you know, well, who, who, it still seems kind of up in the air because we you know when we lost Redstone, our, our developer partner, um, but you know I, there was there was a lot of really interesting plans for Taylor Street to make that a, a, a public gathering space downtown that maybe could get people to the river, uh, you know, put make put a park in there, or. Um, uh, bring the 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 farm the the farmers market you know onto there and provide a, a more permanent home for the farmers market that that would draw people downtown and provide this real nice centerpiece you know the uh, the confluence of the North Branch and the Nooski River and instead we're kind of you know it's it it going to be housing which we do need but is that the best use of that particular piece of property you know I, I I'm much more excited about seeing the French block finally getting renovated <laughs> and, 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 and housing in, in, in some of these other areas that, that, that we, you know. We, that Would we you have preferred the farmer's market there on Saturdays to State Street? Well, so, so I think the State Street is, is, is uh, idea is a is, is a really good idea. I like I like bringing the farmers market out. What I would like to see alongside of that would be to see Langdon Street open up onto more of like an art uh, arts and crafts market uh, in conjunction with that, and really get people walking. And, and, and I think that would draw people into town, which is what we you know an area I would like to see us developing downtown by bringing people in. Um, and finding ways that we could encourage local small businesses and local artisans and local farmers to be able to come in and, and, and de build a, a really strong, vibrant local economy. But, on, um, on Langdon Street, do you think that, as narrow as it is, do you think that you'd get emergency vehicles through there if, if you were using those streets for, for commerce? Well, I, I, I think, you know, I, I think if you were careful, you, you could, you know. Um, and, and you can get emergency, emergency vehicles on either end. It's only a block long. So you you know, in, unless, you know, so for medical emergencies and that sort of thing, I, I think it wouldn't be a huge issue. Um, and, you know, you could plan carefully, you know, that, that was part of the discussion around even State Street, you know, because State Street's a main artery. Right. And, you know, if, if we block off State Street, then, you know, then and something happens at the State House or, or down State Street, then we're really, you know, in a pickle potentially uh, because of our emergency vehicles being trapped on the other side and stranded from, from, from downtown, or the, that, that end of downtown. How do you see, is Mount Pillar a city or a town? Um, well, I think we're technically a city, but I really feel like it's a lot more of a small town feeling to me. I mean, the only thing we're missing is town meeting day, but I mean, we're, we're, we're you know, under 8,000, we're around 8,000 people, and, and you know, that, that, that by anybody's standards, it, it barely qualifies as a city. But, you know, we do have a city form of government and, and we do have city services. So it's, you know, kind of the best of both worlds in, in certain ways. And in some ways, it, it, it makes for some unique challenges, I think. How would you, at, at this point, our downtown is kind of struggling business-wise. Right. It's not, you know, it's a town of, of small family businesses in a small town and it's got the small town blues as other small towns across the country do. It has the internet on one side squeezing, and basically, what would you do to try and revitalize our downtown? Well, I think you know, one of the keys is bringing people in. And, and, and in from where? From, from, uh, from, out, from out of town and in from our neighborhoods. You know, we, we're, we're, we're a small town, but it's easier to drive downtown from most of the outlying areas than it is to, to walk or bike or get there by public transit. So if you want to be a city, then I think we need to have, have that ability that, you know, to, to, to be able to have, you know, a, 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 a less car intensive way to do commerce within town. So I'd like to see, you know, uh, uh, an increase in our, tr in our public transportation. I'd like to see uh, uh, some better um, uh, bike and, and walkability uh, you know, paths to bring, to connect our neighborhoods, to our downtown, to our, to our parks, but also find ways to bring people in from out of town. And, I, and this is where I think like uh, uh, featuring our farmer's market more as a prominent event and um, and then even expanding that on with, with something on Langdon Street, I think could really be a, a good way that, that that could really bring a lot of people into town and, and bring a nice shot of, of, of money into it, into our downtown businesses. Has council been doing that in a way that, that you feel is adequate? I, I, I think I think I, I think council's been doing a lot to help, to, 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 to try to help downtown. Um, you know, there's, there's a couple other issues with downtown that I think that there's been, you know, there's a lot of empty, empty business, business fronts downtown, storefronts, 
and that can you know that that can drag down the surrounding businesses and I think uh, you know, they've talked about having some sort of empty storefront tax or, or fee. I don't know if we need to go there, but maybe have some sort of, you know, if we are going to supplement downtown, some incentivize downtown, we need to, I think one of the things we need to do is incentivize getting those storefronts filled so we have a, a vibrant downtown that doesn't look like it's, it's struggling. <laughs> um, and then another thing, um, you know, but we also need to make sure that, that whatever incentives and subsidies we're giving to downtown is working for all of, all of Montpelier as well. What does that mean? Well, you know, um, if you look at like uh, the distillery that went in, and we've we've given that's going in. Yeah, well, that's going in. Correct. Yeah. That that well, the, the project's been approved, right? And 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 I think we're at almost half a million dollars in, in between the different um, uh, upgrades we're doing to the property between the water main, uh, our, our 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 part of the water main and sewer main. Um, the, the, the railroad crossing and these other upgrades to that. And we haven't even, you know, we don't, we don't know how many jobs that place will actually create in Montpelier. We don't know if any of those jobs are going to produce a living wage. So I would want to see, you know, being a little more diligent about that so that we, you know, if, if we're giving tax money, our tax money to a, a private project to make sure that project really is going to pay back to the, the taxpayers of town. And that's in District 2, of course. That is in District 2, correct. Uh, as is Sabin's Pasture. Yeah. What's your thought on the Sabin? On the long, we're talking about long projects, oh, right. like the Carlot or the Taylor One project, yeah. and we're talking about the, the Sabin. Do you think there'll be housing in Sabin's Pasture? Well, you know, I, I, I think... Uh, because the infrastructure that's feeding into that distillery right. will, in theory... Feed, feed into, into Saban's Pasture. Savings pasture. I, you know, I, I, I do see room for some development down along, especially down a, a, along Berry Street down there. Um, you know, the, the Pioneer Street Bridge is probably our best bridge in the city as far as capacity. And um, uh, so, you know, it, it, you know and, and we're, we, we, are, we already have some kind of commercial type spaces down along in there. So I think having some dense commercial or mixed-use property in there would be a, 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 a good use of that space along, along the road. But up the hill, we also have this you know, really nice, big, untouched, you know, relatively untouched piece of land that the community really uses like a park, even though it's not a park and, and, and we don't have any control over it as a city. And I would love to see at least a segment of the top of that, um, of the top of Savings Pasture protected or, or in, in some way, whether it does become an actual park that the city might buy and, and turn into District 2's premier park. We don't have any parks to speak of in District 2. We have Harrison Field and the Turntable Park on, 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 on Stonecutters. And, you know, so, so there is no real municipal spot to bring families and kids together. We, we just go to Sabins to, sl to sled and walk our dogs by default. Let's actually quantify that in a way that, is, that, that, that we bring that in as a community resource and protect that as a community resource. And, and, and then you know, allow development down at the bottom. That, that would if we're talking about a park, we're obviously talking about increasing the city budget to purchase the park. Right. Do you feel that the city budget is correct sized? We are the highest city budget, one of the highest in the entire state right now. Well, At what point do you feel that that has an impact on, on school enrollment, on the ability of younger families to go into Montpelier to buy in? Well, well I, I, you know, I, I think, I, I think that, that, that having parks will help draw people in. And, and I think that we offset that by you know, developing um, more low-income housing like, along Barry, like, like the Downstreet Project along Berry Street where we have you know, these, these apartment units going in. Um, I think you know the writing is sort of on the wall for our for our town for our city that that working families aren't necessarily going to be able to afford uh, even at the, at today's rates a single family house in town but we can bring people in and 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 uh, you know uh, in, in into the downtown area um, we can also do infilling um, to these you know to some of these large lot old Victorian homes. And, and still keep the character of the town, but have second apartments on there that could either be for, you know, help seniors be able to afford to live there. Well, that's or part of the rezoning that we were discussing well, right. a few yeah. minutes earlier. Yeah, you know, and 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 and, 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 and these are some things that we really need to look at. You know, if if we want to be serious about keeping the character of the town and also meeting our net zero and and efficiency obligations, you know, we need we need to look at a dense downtown that's walkable. 
that, that, that has a vibrant economy. And, and also, you know, I think we need to be looking at green spaces, and, and, and there's so few actual green spaces in town that are really, uh, you know, property values are high in Montpelier because people want to live here. And, and, and people want to live here because we have green spaces. So if we want to, you know, that's part of the, the, the character of the town. Where would you protect. create new green spaces, other than the park in, that you're envisioning and the high part of, of well, well, Sabin's Pasture, pasture ha, you know, ha, ha, has some potential. Um, and, um, uh, you know, there's, there, there's some stuff over in the back of, of District 1 that has some potential. And even, you know, it, it, it What mean, would the back of District 1 be? I, I can't think of the name of the neighborhood right now. It's uh, Allen You're not Wolf. talking all the way out on Finch Road where, where Rosie lives. No, well, well, <laughs> um, you know, I, well, you know, there, there is some neat stuff, you know, up there, um, you know, they, what, what used to be called the Stump Dump Road. That's, that's right? Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. Where, um, where our council yeah, lives. Yeah, well, you know, I, 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 I think to, to, to shift a little bit on, on that, you know, one, sure. one of the things that I, I was really kind of excited about was this potential to put a um, solar, you know, a, a big solar project down there by the old Stump Dump. And, and 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 you know again, it's not just protecting green spaces, but also you know I, I, I'm really a strong supporter of the net zero idea and being able to produce clean, renewable energy in town that also gives us some resilience. Um, you know, from when we have storms and and, and 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 this increased disruption to the infrastructure as a whole. Net zero, um, the competition that awarded ten thousand to the the winning design. How do you see that? ever being implemented? Do you see that being implemented along with its, um, its tram to national life? Well, I, I, think some, I think some of that is aspirational and, 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 and really to get people excited about the idea. I think the reality is that we do need to find ways to increase our efficiency and, and, and produce our own energy that doesn't rely on fossil fuels. And um, both from the aspect of, of global climate change, but also just from an economic aspect, as fossil fuels are getting more expensive, electricity is going to get more expensive, and these other and 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 so uh, you know I, I think part of that was the aspirational of the city of the, you know, Epcot city of the future kind of thinking, and I think some of that was you know there's some really important ideas in there you know as what far would be a good idea for the downtown that that was embedded in that that you could grab onto. Um, well, I, I, I because think because it was principally the downtown they were talking about. Right. Well, you know, I think one of the thing, one of the big things downtown is this, is the, the 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 sheer acreage of 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 parking that 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 that, that takes up downtown right now, and you know, be, um, and and one of the things would be to, I, I think to just to to find a, a different parking solution for our city. Part of that would be to be more walkable and more. You know, that was I think one of the best parts of the idea of. of, of, of of all those, of all the net zero plans, um, was really to to get people downtown in in a way that didn't wasn't bringing more cars downtown. And to you know we we, we do have a, a confluence of two major highways that we do need to funnel traffic through town, but um, you know um, getting more people downtown and taking that property that land that's now used as parking and turning that into some other way that's going to be productive for the city, whether it's housing. Do you or think that would affect business downtown? Because you're talking about bringing people in from the outside. Right. A number of those people would be coming in by car. <laughs> well, it, it, I, I think I think we we can look at other ways to bring people in. Um, you know, we have the, this multimodal transit center that 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 that's going in. If we if that's so if that's coupled with um, a, a more robust public trans transportation downtown. If if we have. Um, uh, you know, there's been the the plan the plan for the the Vermont Rail that that Dave Wittersdorf has been working on, where, where he's brought these 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 commuter uh, train cars in that could run on biodiesel, and so you know that could connect Burlington to and, and Waterbury to 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 town to Montpelier downtown. Um, you know that would require some 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 investment in the tracks, but it's there there are ways to bring people here that don't re, that don't require bringing cars into the downtown, and. You know, we could also have more of a park and ride model where people could park, and we'd have you know free parking and a shuttle that would bring people into downtown. There, there's ways to do that without um, requiring you know. This, this, do you think this tourists po coming in from Boston would park in Waterbury and shuttle? Well, I, I don't. I'm not, I'm not talking about parking in Waterbury, but I, I think tourists that come into Boston that come to that that, that yeah you know, that come to Burlington or come to Waterbury or come to Stowe. You know, they might actually. You know, it would be worth their while to drive down and park in Waterbury and take the take take a scenic train into town 
you know, and 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 and, ha- and, and come in and have dinner, and then and then and, and, and do some shopping. And, While um, we're talking about cars, that's a logical point, jump off point for infrastructure. Right. How is the city's infrastructure? How long have you been in Montpelier? I, I've been here almost seven years now. Um, How is the infrastructure now compared to seven years ago? Well, you know, <laughs> it, 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 it's definitely cyclical, right? You know, I live up on, I live up on the hill on Main Street. And and you know a couple of years ago Main Street was looking nice and 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 you know up, and now we're, we're we're we have potholes again and I think one of the realities is that this is an ongoing cycle that we have to look at. One of my concerns with infrastructure is our water quality, um, and you know both you know from you know on the conservation commission I was really active with the, the, the effort to protect Berlin Pond, but the reality is. Our water mains are another area that we, I, th- I believe, in a lot of neighborhoods, we really need to to upgrade our, our water system. So we have that same quality water we're getting <laughs> from the uh, water treatment plant coming in. Um, you know, we just had a water main break down by J Street uh, this winter that that left a lot of District Two without water for a day. The, the the public works guys did a great heroic job out there in sub-zero Arctic temperatures, thawing that out and fixing that. And but. You know, I think we need to really look at when we're, uh, you know, when we're repaving, you know, and when we're tearing the streets up to look at how, what other infrastructure we, we need to repair it along that, along that same time. Realizing that federal funding is not available for beneath the streets as it was, you know, in the past. Right. How do we afford to deal with our infrastructure, under the street infrastructure, when the streets themselves are, are in lousy shape? Well, I think we need to find a way to do both at the same time, but it's sort of like in your house, if your pipes freeze, you can't wait for a federal grant to fix your pipes, you have to f- fix them. And, and meanwhile, you know, our, 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 you know we, we have neighborhoods where, where, where we've had, you know, water main issues for years, you know, talking to some of the residents, they, they, you know, that, knocking on doors, that, um, you know, that 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 have that, that that are just there. You know, the water quality from some of these pipes. You know, may or, you know, may not, is, you know, some of these some of these water mains are like almost eighty years old, right? Well, and, some of them are hundred. Yeah. Actually. So, right. so you know, um, and the sewers as well. And, and this well, and that, that and this, so that's the other end is 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 you know we need to make our sewers and our stormwater system. Um, you know, right now, whenever we get a big storm, we're dumping, you know, contaminated waste in, into the Winooski River. And I think it's just a matter of being a good neighbor to do everything we can to protect the drinking water of folks downstream from us as well. And one of the really neat projects that they've been talking about is this new upgrade on the sewage treatment plant that could also produce electricity, um, a methane co-generator that basically, you know, poo power, right, that would that would use the methane that's already bubbling off and in, in, uh, con- con- Contributing to, um, you know, the uh, greenhouse gas, and 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 instead harnessing that and, and using that to generate electricity, and I think you know at, uh, that that could produce enough electricity both to run the plant and be the, able to either sell some off or be able to use it for other projects in town, you know, a, a better electric car grid, or something like that, where we could you know more charging stations where we could market that, look, we have poo-powered cars in town, <laughs> you know, ways, ways, ways that you could, could, could generate some interest. Um, and, and um, you know, I, I think as, as, as America's smallest capital city, we have some and the only one without a McDonald's. And the only one without the McDonald's, right? We have a way to to, to actually leverage, I, I think, some 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 in, in, innovative funding from the different organizations that are out there that um, you know give grants to communities for you know uh, efficiency and 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 uh, greenhouse gas aware, you know awareness grant improve, infrastructure improvement grants like that. Ben, in uh, March, city council will meet as they meet annually and they set their their annual goals and each council person comes up with those objectives that they'd like to see during the next year. What would Ben bring to the table? What would be two issues that you would want to see on that board for council to consider during the year as serious objectives? Um, Well, I I think one of them that we haven't talked about yet um, is I would like to, I would like to see a more of a uh, public engagement and oversight of the police department in town here. Um, we had this really tragic event at the high school, um, and 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 I have two kids that were in the high school, and and without trying to armchair quarterback what happened there, um, looking at 
trying to find out what the policies that our police department has, I realized that there is no civilian oversight of the police department in Montpelier. Um, there is no police board. There is no police committee. It's you know, and is that a solution searching for a problem? Well, no. I, I, well, I, I think I, I think I think I think it is a problem. I think it is a problem in that um, if we don't have a a, a a a a public engagement with the police, that then then um, uh, we 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 get the we we end up with we we have the potential to end up with a police department that's not necessarily responsive or to to the way the community wants them to police. You know, the police are a member of our community, right? And, 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 and it's, so it's a difficult conversation. Well, they're part of the fabric. They're, 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 they're an essential part of the fabric. Well, they're part of the fabric, but they live here, right? right? And, and they're our neighbors. And, and I really think that the chief is doing, a, is doing some really great first steps to trying to improve um, uh, relations, uh, the Coffee with a Cop program. And, and I'm not looking to, like, have an adversarial relationship with the police, but I, I, I want, you know, I, I think one of the things that we need to start doing is having difficult conversations in, in our community. You know, people say we shouldn't talk about politics or religion, but, but I think, you know, we, instead we should teach people how to have a, 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 a difficult conversation in, 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 a, in a way that does not, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a calm and rational way that, that, that builds partnership and builds a relationship. So, you know, I would love to see a, um, a, a committee that is formed of the city manager and the police chief and three members of the of, of the public that are appointed by city council, that would sit and meet, and would both discuss and and and, and you know the the police procedures and, and 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 policies, but also serve as a way to be sort of a um, an ombudsman for the public. So if there are issues with the police department, we can be sure that they're going to they're going to be handled in a very transparent and open way. You know, in other communities in Vermont, or you know, uh, that hasn't happened. You know, and we look at looking back a couple of years, uh, Roger Pion up in up in Orleans County. You know, felt like he was being harassed by the sheriff's department, and had no way to have those issues addressed, and, and took it out, took it out on a bunch of cop cars with a tractor. You know, that's not the kind of thing I want to see happen in Montpelier. I want to, I want people to be confident that, that 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 the police are responsive. And you don't feel that you could call Tony. Or email Tony and set a meeting. Well, I'm sure I could email Tony and set a meeting. But for example, with what happened at the, at, you know, at, at, at the school, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's not always in his hands, right? You know, the 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 the, 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 the lack of transparency around that shooting is really, you know, from the Vermont State isn't Police. A, I was going to say, isn't that a state issue? But, but it, it is a state the issue. The Vermont troopers had control of that site. Right. Well, not yeah, Officer but, Philbrick. Right, I, I do understand that, but but also looking at just as a general as as a general at, at the national picture of policing and in the state picture of policing, um, you know, if, if we look at the Vermont State Police, there have been I think th you know three police involved shootings in the last two months. Um, at least two of them involve people with mental who are in mental health distress. The, you know, the one at the high school here, and the one that just happened the other night down um, on eighty nine, where you know somebody's suicidal and and then gets killed by the police. And 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 you know, uh, so what I what I would love to see is for us to be able to work in here in Montpelier and set up a, 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 a program that, that, that can really lead the way and that the state police might look at as a model for ways that they can improve their public engagement because the shoot first and then cover up later model of policing does not really sit well with me. You know, I think um, uh, we need more transparency and accountability, but, but we can do it in a way that's not adversarial, in a way that builds community and and, and, and really builds a, a strong partnership. I want to go back to the budget one more time. Sure. Uh, the Recreation Center on Berry Street mm -hmm. has its problems. It's yeah, the yeah. old armory. What is an appropriate solution in your mind for a Recreation Center? Well, so, you know, I... I, I is again, it a modification of the current building? Is it an $8 million facility, as the play and swim people say? Where, I, I, where is it in your mind? Well, yeah, I, 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 what, what, what I would like to see is, is, is some way to, to actually build more of a multi-generational center. You know, the senior center, center is serving our community well right now, but, but we, have a very, we have an aging population. We're going to have more seniors in our, in our community that are kind of, kind of 
uh, you know, so opportunities that, that, that bring our kids and our seniors together. And, you know, I, I would love to see some sort of way that if, if we did build a large, you know, $8 million rec center um, or something, something you know, aspirational like that, that, that we find ways that, that we can make this a multi-generational type of thing. I think that could also provide some um, uh, supplemental income for seniors who are going to be hit, you know, hard, really hard hit with, the, with these coming, you know, the, the increase what would in that cost. Do to, if, if our tax bills were to go up to finance that, do you think that that would have an impact on our population in town? Well, is I, there a relationship between taxes and population? Uh, well, you know, as, as some would say. <clears throat> well, if, if 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 you look at, you know, it, it, some, some say that, but then you you, you actually look at, at at the reality, and you look at like you know taxation versus population and and, and where people are moving to, um, New Hampshire or, and the cost of living in a state. Um, you know, there was a study that was done recently that showed that the cost of, by MIT that showed the cost of, cost of living for a family of three in Vermont was around fifty-one thousand dollars a year. The same cost of living for the same family in New Hampshire with no taxes is fifty-five thousand dollars a year. So taxation isn't the only expense that we have. Um, the other thing is, if if we bring a vibrant downtown in and we're we're bringing some density to town, that helps the master list. That that brings in tax revenue. So you know, it's it, it's a matter of. It, it, looking at is this an investment that's going to that's going to help everybody in the community, and 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 that 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 is what what I would really look at is is making sure that when we do take tax money that people have worked hard for, that that we're investing it in a way that's going to pay back for them at some point as well. To, to, you know, it's going to take us all working together and chipping in together, and this goes back to um, you know the living wage issue. And I know it's a state issue, but but you know I, I think if if when we give tax incentives to to businesses that that we had that as a as a, as a condition that they were going to pay living wage, you know people that make what a living, do you consider a living wage? Well, you know I I, I think right now there, you know the, the the number that's going around is fifteen dollars an hour, and 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 you know if you look at that 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 gets people off of off of public assistance which lowers that tax burden there it gets people off of income it potentially gets them off of income sensitivity depending on on, on their household size which which then could 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 improve the the, the money coming into the the master list so there, there it could be you know and it gives people some money to spend downtown at downtown businesses you know if you really look at at the economy of it uh, pe people can't. If people are, are are struggling to feed themselves, and if people are worried about their next meal, and and just being able to make their basic living, they're not going downtown and 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 and, and, and spending money at one of our restaurants downtown, or they're not going down to one of the boutique shops downtown. You know, they're going over to Berlin. So if we need to help people in town be able to afford to live here and be able to afford to actually spend money here and down, and and. And, and this is like the reality, like on Barry Street, that I'm seeing is that people are people are struggling right now, and the the, the that that tax burden, it, it, well, that, that 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 tax base, you know, it, it, as an investment, it, it is going to go is going to help these people be able to, you know, raise their standard of living up and be able to enjoy the same benefits of town that that those of us that aren't currently struggling with food security and housing security can can enjoy here in town. Ben. This is the end of this discussion, and I think you really made some excellent points. And now it's up to you, and it's up to you to, to get out and vote on town meeting. Uh, we're going to do every candidate for every office. We're going to have the city budget discussed. We're going to have the school budget discussed. We're going to have the bond issues discussed. So that at the end of this process, you should be able to give an informed opinion but that informed opinion has to translate into a vote on town meeting day. Get out and vote. Make sure your family and friends get out and vote and watch the other shows. Thank you for watching this one.